Look at this map. It shows the Bristol Channel in the UK. This channel has some of the highest tidal ranges in the world. Believe it or not, the river named the River Severn that flows into the channel is an incredibly popular surfing spot. But surfers here don't ride downstream. They travel upwards on impressive natural waves reaching speeds of up to 20 kilometers per hour. This is a tidal bore, where ocean tides force water to flow backward up a river, creating waves typically around 2 meters high with rare surges up to 2.8 meters. And this strange phenomenon holds an untapped power source that could transform Britain's energy landscape. For over a century, the UK has considered harnessing these tides with a 17-kilometer wall across the Bristol Channel. It could provide 5% of Britain's electricity and become Europe's largest renewable energy project. But despite being renewable, environmentalists are its strongest critics. One claimed that building here would be like scribbling a note on the Mona Lisa. So why was this ambitious megaproject abandoned? And as climate change accelerates, does it deserve a revival? Tidal bores are far more exciting than their name suggests. When powerful ocean tides meet a shallow river, they don't stop, they push upstream, creating the surreal sight of waves traveling backward up a river. At the Bristol Channel, tides from the Atlantic Ocean meet the River Severn, creating a bore that travels 40 kilometers upstream, roughly half the length of the Panama Canal. It's the second longest tidal bore in the world, beaten only by China's Chiantang River, whose 130-kilometer bore creates 10-meter waves that can be heard roaring before they arrive. This unique feature has made the Severn a perfect candidate for tidal energy. Since the 1800s, dams across the Severn or Bristol Channel have been proposed, though initially not for energy. In 1849, engineer Thomas Fulljames suggested a dam between Beechley and Oust, where the original Severn Bridge now stands, to provide flood protection and create a shipping harbor. By the 1920s, people realized this waterway could generate electricity. Tidal power had been used in mills since the Industrial Revolution. But harnessing it for modern electricity was revolutionary. The secret to powering millions of homes was hiding in plain sight. Tidal energy's biggest advantage? It's both renewable and reliable. Unlike wind or solar, which depend on weather conditions, tides are governed by the moon's gravitational pull. They're predictable and powerful. Water currents generate far more energy than wind or sunshine. To produce tidal energy, a barrage wall is built like a dam to trap water. When the basin fills, gates open to release the water, spinning massive 20-meter turbines as it flows through. In 1925, the first feasibility study proposed a 4.8-kilometer barrage that would generate 800 megawatts of electricity. But at 25 million pounds, it was deemed too expensive. For context, Britain's iconic Battersea power station cost just 2.14 million at the time and produced 509 megawatts. And nobody knew about climate change yet. One of tidal energy's greatest advantages wouldn't be recognized for decades. As time passed, costs ballooned. A 1948 study estimated 60 million pounds, and by 1953, it had reached 200 million pounds, a sum post-war Britain couldn't afford. But across the English Channel, France took action. In 1966, President Charles de Gaulle unveiled the Rance Tidal Power Station in Brittany. Today, it produces approximately 0.1 to 0.12% of France's energy. Whilst a small percentage, this is a small project versus what could be built in the Bristol Channel. Throughout the 20th century, events like the 1973 oil crisis and the 1986 Chernobyl disaster repeatedly reignited interest in the Severn Barrage. 
Despite criticism that the rant station was too expensive, it eventually paid for itself. A 2009 article noted, the plant's costs have now been recovered and electricity production costs are lower at 18 euro cents per kilowatt hour, compared with nuclear generation at 25 cents per kilowatt hour. With Tidal Energy, you're playing the long game. When climate change became a major political issue, the Severn Barrage gained serious momentum. In 2008, the UK government announced an ambitious 17-kilometer barrage across the River Severn. The engineering firm that built New York's first subway system was commissioned for a two-year feasibility study. Estimated at 15 billion pounds with a decade-long construction timeline, the project would revolutionize Britain's energy landscape. Two options were explored, a barrage, essentially a dam, and artificial lagoons, enclosures that trap water like a marina. The main barrage would stretch from near Cardiff to Weston Supermare, seven times longer than China's Three Gorges Dam. It would house 216 turbines and include locks for ships accessing Bristol, Cardiff, and Newport ports. Two smaller barrages were also considered, along with potential lagoons at Bridgewater Bay and Welsh grounds. The power plant's capacity, a staggering 8,640 megawatts, equivalent to three nuclear stations. It could operate for 120 plus years, and even double as a road or railway bridge. Most impressively, it would eliminate 18 million tons of greenhouse gases annually, equivalent to removing a significant number of cars from the road. Britain had pledged that 40% of its energy would come from renewable sources by 2020. In 2008, renewables accounted for just 4.5% of electricity. The Severn Barrage would help transform a nation historically tied to coal into a green energy leader. As one government advisor put it, we need to turn our grid from being one of the dirtiest in Europe to being one of the cleanest. But the project's strong opposition came from an unexpected source. The Environment Agency's chief described the project as like scribbling a note on the Mona Lisa. The Severn Boar had created a delicate ecosystem around the river, just as defacing a small part of the Mona Lisa ruins the entire painting, building a barrage would devastate this entire ecosystem. Spinning turbines would kill fish, disrupting the food chain for thousands of birds. The project would impact the habitat of 68,000 birds and tens of thousands of salmon, shads, lampreys, and sea trout. Like surfers riding the boar, these fish are swept upriver by the tide. The estuary serves as a nursery for young fish before they return to the sea. Critics argued that construction could destroy up to 60% of the estuary's intertidal habitat, an irreplaceable wildlife refuge in a protected Natura 2000 site. To extend the Mona Lisa analogy, if you scribbled on the painting, people would consider you incredibly arrogant. Environmentalists questioned what right humans had to alter a delicate ecosystem that had existed for centuries. Was producing clean energy worth fundamentally changing a natural ecosystem? Developers proposed creating wildlife sanctuaries elsewhere as compensation. But the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds said at least three times the amount lost would need to be created to ensure birds took to it and did not migrate elsewhere. France's Rance Tidal Power Station had faced similar issues. Species once abundant there, conger eels, flatfish, and sand eels had largely disappeared after construction. The RSPB even challenged the project's climate benefits, stating construction will cause the emission of 10 million tons of carbon. Greenhouse gas savings will be substantial in the long run, but those savings could be too late to avert the damage of climate change. This highlighted a major dilemma facing renewable energy projects balancing local environmental protection against the bigger picture of reducing greenhouse emissions. If Britain wanted to reach its 40% renewable target, it needed to decide quickly. But as in the post-war era, another crisis was about to derail the project. 
In 2008, global financial markets collapsed, creating the worst economic disaster since the Great Depression. This was hardly the time for the UK government to spend billions on a tidal energy project. But there was a potential workaround – private funding. Unfortunately, attracting private investors proved difficult for a project of this scale. A 2007 report had warned, if the government is not prepared to find any mechanism to put public funds into the pot, it will die. The harsh truth, tidal energy is only cheaper than alternatives after a very long period. A 2019 study estimated commercial tidal energy costs at 130 to 280 per megawatt hour, compared to 20 for wind, 22 to 50 for solar, and 120 to 190 for nuclear. The figures showing France's Rance station as cheaper than nuclear only emerged four decades after completion. Tidal energy requires patience. These projects can last 120 years, while nuclear plants operate for just 20 to 40 years. Why so expensive? High upfront construction costs far exceed those of wind or solar. Barrages must withstand powerful water currents and marine conditions. In Canada's Bay of Fundy, strong currents broke experimental turbines beyond repair. The water carries sediment and rocks, requiring incredibly robust equipment. It's also a niche technology, without the economies of scale that benefit solar panels and wind turbines. Add regulatory red tape, a tidal project in New York's East River required 23 different permits from 14 agencies, and costs soar. When the feasibility report was completed in 2010, it contained mixed news. In May 2010, a new UK government took office, focused on cutting public spending to reduce the deficit. By October, they announced there was no strategic case for the project. Expected to cost £30 billion, the government opted to build eight nuclear power plants instead, a better deal since the barrage would only generate power equivalent to three nuclear stations. The study highlighted several challenges. The Severn estuary's unpredictable movements of sediment made it impossible to predict the impacts of the tidal power schemes with absolute certainty. Regulatory barriers would also increase costs. While the 17-kilometer barrage offered the lowest energy costs of all proposals, it had the largest environmental impact. Smaller barrages produced less energy with disproportionate environmental damage. Tidal lagoons seemed most reasonable, with Bridgewater Bay preferred over Fleming Lagoon. But even this option wasn't greenlit. The study also questioned economic benefits. While the project would create jobs, these would come at the expense of shipping, fishing, and aggregate extraction industries along the estuary. France's Rance project might seem successful, but France had focused primarily on nuclear power, which provides 70% of its electricity. In 2011, South Korea opened the Siwa Lake Tidal Power Station, becoming the world's largest tidal power project. With 254 megawatts of capacity, it powers a city of 500,000 and saves emissions equivalent to 100,000 cars annually. However, South Korea built it on highly polluted waters, where, ironically, the power station improved water quality. Meanwhile, the UK has been developing leadership in tidal stream projects, with installations like Orbital Marine Power in Scotland demonstrating the country's broader engagement with marine renewables. But the Severn Barrage refused to die. In 2012, a private company named Corlin Haffron offered to finance construction, promising a more environmentally friendly design. Politician Peter Hain supported this new proposal, claiming that spinning turbines at lower depths would prevent fish deaths. Adding more turbines deeper in the water would compensate for reduced generation. This approach would supposedly preserve 60% more tidal habitat for birds. Hain boldly claimed the project would actually benefit the environment slowing down the fearsome Severn Tide, introducing more light and oxygen, and therefore improving water quality, attracting more fish which will support greater and more diverse bird life. 
The RSPB remained skeptical, noting that these benefits were unproven. In 2013, the revamped project was rejected. In its current form, the Hafrin Power proposals for a Severn Barrage do not demonstrate that it could deliver the benefits it claims. In 2017, a tidal lagoon was proposed for nearby Swansea Bay. Again, the project was deemed poor value for money despite the evolution of UK renewables policy, including Contracts for Difference CFD, and Regulated Asset Base RAB funding models designed to support renewable energy. By the 2020s, it seemed tidal energy in the Severn was dead in the water. Then, incredibly, nine years after being abandoned, the UK government announced in March 2022 that this project was back on the agenda. The war in Ukraine dramatically increased the need for European energy independence. British consumers saw energy bills rise by 750 pounds annually, triggering a cost of living crisis. Combined with the transition to electric vehicles and growing energy demands from data centers and AI, the UK now expects electricity demand to more than double by 2050. Suddenly, the Severn Barrage was back in the conversation. In March 2025, after consulting with over 500 experts, the Western Gateway Commission issued a new feasibility report concluding that the UK government needed to act now on tidal energy in the Severn. However, it recommended a lagoon rather than a full barrage. The project would combine public and private investment, with an estimated £100 million in proposed government funding needed for development before private finance would commit to construction. The report suggested using a regulated asset base funding approach, guaranteeing returns on investment for the lifetime of the asset. Looking at the bigger picture, the UK could use tidal energy to create an entire new industry. There are no tidal lagoons anywhere in the world. Britain would be pioneering this technology. Engineer Dr. Andrew Garrod noted this would be the first tidal lagoon, but it would be using well-established technology. If we did establish this project or a series of projects around the UK, this country could become a hub for tidal range activity. Just as Germany is known for wind power and France for nuclear, the UK could make its mark in tidal energy. After a century of proposals, false starts, and abandoned dreams, the tides might finally be turning for the Severn Barrage. Right now, Britain stands at a historic crossroads, with energy prices skyrocketing and climate targets looming. The decision they make about the Severn Barrage won't just affect the UK, it could transform how coastal nations worldwide think about energy. The technology is proven, the resource is waiting, the need is urgent. So will Britain finally harness the massive power flowing through the Severn every single day? Or will this century-old vision remain the greatest energy opportunity never taken? The answer will determine whether those surfers riding the Severn bore are witnessing a natural wonder or surfing on wasted power that could have lit up millions of homes.